Uh, can you guys believe this? A little over a week, and I remembered why I didn't want a black car as my first pick. <laughs> uh, oh well. So we need to get the Grand Am out this morning, I hope. Um, it's been sitting here for a while. The brakes are all rusty. Oh, I'm not putting another set of brakes on them. So, let's let this guy warm up a little bit while I put the uh, Civic on the street. Ah, did you hear all that ice break? That was awesome. Right. I don't even remember how much gas is in this. Uh, quarter. A little under a quarter. Alright. That a girl? All right, so as predicted the other night, we did have another snowstorm. Should be the last one for the year, for the winter season, because spring is only a few days away. Today is March 13th, and it snowed a little bit last night, so it did add a little bit to the uh, snow that we had uh, overnight the other night. And today, we have to Go get my sister's Fiesta again, the 17 green machine, the Ford Fiesta SE hatchback. Um, we have a serious issue with it. Um, and I kind of looked at it already and ordered the part. And hopefully it won't take that long to change. But we have to change the evap purge valve so about a month ago she came over to the house uh, said that she had a check engine light and the car felt like it wasn't running right it felt like it was shaking um, she said the uh, check engine light wasn't blinking so the car wasn't misfiring it just appeared to have a rough idle so she brought it to the house we hooked the scan tool up to it and I don't remember what the exact codes were, but there was one for an EVAP uh, leak that was detected. And then there was another one in relation to a running rich condition. So, um, you know, it took me a while to think of what the possibility is. Um, obviously to do a full uh, EVAP test, the best thing to have is a smoke machine, which is something I don't have at the house. But my initial hypothesis was the, uh, the EVAP purge valve could possibly be stuck in a position where it's open, more, a little more open than it should be. And the whole uh, rich condition is obviously, you know, the fuel vapors from the tank. There's more vapors entering the uh, engine from the tank than there should be, and it's causing it to run a little rich. Um, so that was my initial, you know, hypothesis. And then just a few days ago, she ended up going to the gas station she put some gas in it and right after she put gas in it she went to go start it up to leave the gas station and the car didn't want to start so that there is pretty much a dead giveaway that yes uh, my hypothesis was right with that purge valve in the open position that it was in or that it's stuck in or you know whatever is wrong with it the um, when she put the gas in the tank, obviously the, the fuel pressure in the tank, you know, is filling up pretty quick, but with that valve open, when it shouldn't be, all of that fresh gas vapor is just rushing into the uh, intake of the engine and it's basically flooding it out, like, like you would if you just flooded the car with liquid gasoline, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, it was flooded, she got it to run and it was running really bad. And we finally, you know, she she finally decided to have me fix it. So we're going to get it now. Um, it's about 20 some degrees and there's gonna be a wind chill and it's starting to snow again. So hopefully this repair isn't gonna to take too long. Um, the contraption itself doesn't look all that difficult. Um, I don't know exactly where, you know, the, the hookups are under the hood, 
I know where the purge valve is, but I don't remember where one end connects to the other. It's, uh, it's, it's the actual valve and then the two hoses from each side that come with the entire assembly. So this shouldn't take too long, uh, I really hope. All right. So let's see how it runs this morning. This is a cold start. Make sure everything is. All right, here we go. Okay, not bad. All right. I'm probably going to have to scrape some stuff off the window. So, let's let that warm up for a moment. And uh, we'll be on our way. Alright, we made it back to the house. And now that it's getting, you know, warmed up, you can definitely feel it's running a little rougher than uh, these cars usually do. So, uh, and it's really starting to come down now as far as the snow. Oh, somebody needs some wipers. I don't believe this. It wasn't supposed to snow anymore today. And it's the wind's picking up, so it's freezing. So I might have to let, I might run the sob while I'm out here doing this so that way I have some sort of, you know, heat source to go to. If I start to lose the feeling in my fingers. But like I said, hopefully everything goes well with this. It shouldn't take that long. The good old sobs should probably run for a little bit anyway. By the way, 196,000 recently. Oh yeah. heated seat on yeah so we'll just let that run that way if I have to take a break I have somewhere warm to go all right I can't believe all these problems that has occurred with this particular car I mean our I have not had to do a thing to our fiesta and this is like, I guess the third thing that I've had to do with it. We did the, the tank, the coolant tank, which was caused by an overheating issue, which we later found out was the fan. So this junkyard fan that I put in here for 11 bucks is still holding up nice and strong. I haven't had any overheating issues. And now we got this purge valve, which is this thing right here. That goes back there pretty far, don't it? Oh no. Alright, so um, I need to assess, see what I need, and hopefully we can get to all this stuff and there won't be any complications because, well, as you can see with all the snow flying around, this is not the day that I want to have any complications. But we need to have this issue fixed. Alright, so here's what we got going on. So, first off, we need to unplug the connector. There we go. All right, connector, done. Tuck that back in here. All right. And then, the new one also comes with this bracket. So we have to remove the bracket, and that looks like it's gonna be like, what, maybe an eight, a seven or an eight. So we need to remove the bracket. The entire assembly it's in the car but these hoses come with it and you can see they're kind of like you know you can't just take these off <laughs> so the hoses have to come with it so this hose down here gets pulled out of that guy and of course it goes way under there and it's got a pair of you know squeeze clamps that have to be um, used the other end which is coming from the tank we have to remove it out of this thing here it's going all the way down and i don't know if you can 
see it, but right there, there's a green lock. That green lock right there. So that is the other end. That's what I have to get to. And then that whole thing will come up as one piece. And then we put the uh, we put the new one in. Ugh, I don't know how I'm gonna reach that end down there. I might take this air snorkel off again. Um, because then I could probably get in this way. So this tube is too tight to take off, um, you know, just from doing this end to the throttle body. So we're just gonna remove the top of the air cleaner. I already got the clamp down here loose a seven millimeter bolt on the clamp and these there's four of these on the top of the air cleaner housing and uh, what is it a t25 t25 sure they're all loose and out this one's not there we go catch on this one still on yeah yeah it was all right so there we go should be able to just wiggle this thing off here all right i threw it in there so that way it stays warm with it being plastic you know does this help at all a little bit i mean that clamp's really in there isn't it i can't even see it still Sheesh, didn't think that that was going to be that big of a pain. Alright, so the nice thing, I guess, about this line is once you have the room, there's the clamp right there. It's not a very strong clamp. I was actually able to use my fingers to pinch it in and, and wiggle it up that way. But now, you know, the line itself is... It's stuck in there pretty good, so... breaking the thing off of the intake or anything so I think we're gonna stop for a second and we're going to revisit that I am now going to put my attention on the green lock and uh, how I'm gonna get get back there Let's break this down. all right we got that guy loose or unlocked I just kind of pried it oh comes right off there we go Alright, so the one end is loose, Let's, we have to get it through this uh, holder here, without breaking the holder. Sheesh, that might also be a two-handed operation. Alright, so we got that part out. We unplugged it, so now we're at the part where we have to loosen this bolt here. And like I said, I believe that was an eight. I was really thinking the winter work was going to be over. I think we got to take that thing off through that connector right there. It's held on by a Christmas tree. So we got the connector out, we didn't break too much of it. But the actual tree looks like it's it'll still hold. And then the entire bracket wraps around this other vacuum line here. So there's a thing with teeth. You gotta use your screwdriver to kind of pry it and unlock it. And then from there, it's just that little guy down there that I gotta try to get off. 
so this is all twisty and turny. But we're unhooked, except for up here at the intake. So let me just work on that and we will be home free. All right, so that took a lot of persuasion. Jeez. There it is. The new one looks just like this. So the valve in here must have been in the stuck position where it wasn't closing or opening fully the way that it should have been. Man, that thing's a pain right there. Whew. I'm probably going to have to find something to put over top of that. Can we see it now? A little bit. Yeah, that thing right there. <laughs> Holy crap. All right, I need to take a break, I'm cold. I'll be right back. Okay, old one, out of the way. The new one is here, and uh, to start it off, the little ring with the little teeth on it, you have to take it off the old bracket. It's easy, you just squeeze the tabs, and it pops out, and then you just put it in this new one. So that's what we did. Also, took some Vaseline and kind of lubed up both spots to try to get it in there a little bit easier because with how hard that one was coming out for some reason, I didn't see this one going in as easy. So let me get this situated. I'm going to start by trying to get this in there first. Then we'll hook the rest of it up, get it tightened down, put the air tube back on and see how it runs. All right, so that hard part's over. So that appears to be on there, and I moved the clamp up toward the intake. So it should be good. I locked in this little ring thing on the other line here. Um, so I'm gonna put the bolt in it. The, the bracket goes underneath the intake, like that, see? Probably can't do this one-handed. Nope, we're getting it. There we go. All right. Doesn't have to be overly tight, it's not a big bolt. No, it's not going anywhere. Um, let's see, this plastic thing here got spun around, so I have to re spin it around. And it's obviously going to hold our new line. Like that. We'll push this line into that thing. It's a lot easier going in than it is coming out. And now, I'm going to need both hands, but we just have to connect our EVAP line from the gas tank. I can do one hand to Let's see. Can you see it? Right there. Yeah. Zoom in. There we go. Alright, so we got the other line. Push. It's on. And we just push the green thing in, I think. Oh, there we go. Both sides go on. Feels like it. It's not coming off. All right, done. So the system is hooked up. Now we have to plug uh, Plug it in. And don't forget this guy here. Just, just gotta push the Christmas tree back in. 
good. This is our throttle body connection here. I had to move it out of the way. Push that back over. All right, let's get our air tube back on. And then we can start it up. So getting it actually installed was a lot quicker than trying to get it out. I think part of that, most of it was that little, you know, the other end of this line here. So let's get our intake tube from the Saab, which is nice and toasty compared to out here. The heat inside the Saab, I had it on the floor, kept this hose nice and loose to uh, get it to flex a little bit, you know, when you're putting it back on. All right. Let's get the T20. Ah, sorry for all the sniffling, guys. Man, it is cold. The snow stopped. So that's a plus. These little guys don't need to be overly tight either. They're only little torque spit screws and they're going into plastic. Intake tube is tight at the top here. Top of the air cleaner box is tightened down. Torque screws. Plug this vacuum hose into this area here. Okay. All right, all this is fastened down. That's hooked up. We got that where it needs to be. We got this where it needs to be. That's plugged in back there. Hopefully that line is in all the way. It's hard to tell. The Vaseline made it go in pretty easy, so I'm assuming it's pushed all the way up, but you can't see it. It's hard to feel even. Put the clamps on it. Um, all right, let's go get the scan tool, delete the codes, and start it up. Uh, all right, I shut the sob off. It's been on for a long time, and we're just about done here. This car's got to warm up, so. All right. Everything off. Eh, it's gonna fall. You know, sadly enough, I'm pretty sure this scan tool has been hooked up to this car in particular than any of the other cars that I've had so far. Need you to stay. Yeah. Alright. So, um, we'll check the codes. That way you guys can see what they were. Uh, eventually. We'll do read codes, and uh, we're going to retrieve all CMDTCs. Don't know if anything is set since the two that I saw. Quite a bit. Wow. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, a few have been added. Um, so the ones that we saw originally was the P0456 EVAP emission system leak. Uh, the 21 P2196 oxygen sensor signal bias or stuck rich. Um, that was the other one. Uh, and then it looks like P1450 unable to bleed fuel tank vacuum. So that might have been when she pumped the gas into the tank. And then, yeah, yeah it's also pending. Uh, so we're, we are going to remove all of these. All right, so we're gonna we're just gonna delete all these codes have been successfully erased. I want to go to live data. <clears throat> we're gonna start it up, and I, I want to see what the uh, fuel trims are going to look like. So I will wait until we are establishing vehicle communication. Sometimes this is this is a process in itself. 
Alright, here we go. Check engine light is off. Engine already feels a little smoother. Um, so right now the vent valve is at zero percent, which means oh wait, yeah. So the which one do I want? Purge valve. Sorry, purge valve is the one we want. So purge valve zero percent. It's saying there's no fault at this time. I want to keep an eye on that one. Um, so that means there is no additional fuel vapors entering the engine from the tank. All right, so right now it's running as should be. Uh, evaporative emission vapor management, no fault. I'll keep a hold of that one. I probably am going to put a little bit of gas in it. Um, she's down about a quarter anyway, but we might throw some gas in it just to see how it acts at the gas station. Um, I'm not expecting there to be any problems. Look at our long-term fuel trim. So at negative 4.68%, the computer has been trying to take away gasoline from the engine uh, because of how rich it was running. So this should be correcting um, in time, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, I want to see short term. All right, there we go. So it still looks like uh, we are trying to take fuel away. Uh, immediately so we will keep an eye on that I think I think that's all that I really wanted to look at right. so um, show check marks so technically, these should be close to about 0%. Uh, the short term is always going to fluctuate um, because it's, you know, on demand. Uh, the long term is obviously over time. So right now we're still trying to take fuel away. But we'll give it some time here. Um, you got to remember also it's cold. So <clears throat> technically... We're probably using a little more fuel to get the engine warm. And then once the engine's warmed up, these will probably start to drop. So we'll let it sit here for a moment. I'm gonna go clean up all my stuff, double check everything, we should be good, and go from there. All right, so there we go. So we're getting somewhere now. We're uh, idling out, we're, we're getting a little warm. Uh, so the short term is dropping closer to zero, as you can see. So that's, that is good, that is definitely good. All right, so right now it looks like the purge valve has decided to open up, so it's delivering like 20 some percent of re, you know recycled fuel vapors to the engine. Fuel trim is almost at zero. Oh, we're adding fuel now, yeah. So that's probably why the, uh, the valve is opening. Maybe we're trying to recycle some more um, you know vapor so so it's almost there it's almost there so we're gonna go take it out uh, I'll drive it around for a bit uh, get it to full operating temperature hopefully with how cold it is and then like I said we're going to uh, hit up the gas station I'll throw a few bucks in just to add some you know pressure to the tank and we shouldn't have any issues with it starting uh, after that. So let's head out. All right, so here we are. I just pulled up to the gas pump. Um, we're still taking fuel away, but I just came to a stop. So um, the short term is still adjusting. The long term kind of eh. 
Uh, we're not at full operating temperature yet also, so that could also be. I saw the purge valve working. Uh, it was at least being commanded uh, you know, to certain percentages during our drive. We're still saying there's no fault here. Okay, so there's no codes detected, which is good. We're on a good roll here. Um, all right, so we're gonna shut the car off and I'm gonna put, I don't know, like 10 bucks in. Might not be anything with gas prices now, but it's a small car, so it'll be all right. Here we go. All right, I put 15 in. So that brings this to uh, half tank. Dead even too, half tank even. Yeah, that's what I want to see. All right, so let's go to coolant temp again. Emission purge fault. Emission purge valve percentage. Fuel levels at fifty-five percent. Long term, short term. Okay, let's try and crank it. Start it right up. Zero percent of the purge valve is being used at this time. Our short term fuel delivery is at zero exactly, it's not fluctuating. Oh, there it goes. So we're adding fuel. They're almost balancing out, so that's that's another good thing. Because this negative plus whatever's here is, you know, close to the zero. So both of them are supposed to meet at zero, you know, somewhere around there. But I think that this will change. Oh, now our purge is on, so it's using some of the new fuel vapors in the tank. It's controlling it. It feels like it's running pretty good. We still don't have a light on. taking some fuel away now so I don't know we'll see what happens but I think uh, I think that's gonna fix it you know in the long run so we'll take it home I'll recheck it for codes one more time and then I will ship it let's check to see if we have any codes coming up anything pending because we put the gas in it No fault codes detected. Ship it. Now, if another problem does take place, um, you know, down the line, it might be a few drive cycles if something did decide to show up. But I think we're good here. Um, the whole, you know, filling up the gas tank and then all of a sudden the car doesn't want to start. That is pretty much like a dead giveaway of it being a bad purge valve because that valve should be closed. You shouldn't be getting all that fresh vapors into the tank uncontrolled like that or into the intake uncontrolled like that and uh that's what happened uh but i had a feeling too you know the other codes that we were seeing the rich condition and the whole um thing with the evap leak it just it all was was pointing to that purge valve the whole tank thing putting gas in the tank was get the cord away uh, that whole thing was just a dead giveaway. So that's it. That's how you change the purge valve on a uh, Fiesta. I'm sure it accounts for any American 2011 to, what, 2019 Fiesta. That's it. We're good. We're done. We're done here. All right. Done deal. Another satisfied customer. You can imagine how tiny that valve is in there, you know? <laughs> it's not that big, but it has failed. It's no good. Uh, about $70 from uh, the dealership, so not the most expensive thing in the world. But 
all it was. So if you enjoyed today's vlog, if it helps you out with your Fiesta, or technically it can account for any other vehicle that maybe haven't, you know, the same symptoms. Um, EVAP systems are generally uh, the same across the board, so similar uh, uh, symptoms, you're probably looking at an EVAP purge valve, much like this one. So if it did help you in that way, you know, give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and check out teespring.com slash store slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. That's all that I've got for today. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.